So I'll introduce our next speaker. Um, he's Anand. He's uh, Anand Inguva, uh, an engineer at Google, and uh, he's part of this team uh, that has been working on improving the experience of developers uh, for for ML workloads. And so this is this will be interesting because it's uh, dealing with ML but in in streaming pipelines. So, hello everyone. In this session, we'll talk about auto model refresh and run inference. So the agenda for this session will be, yeah, we'll talk about the run inference a little bit and what is automatic model refresh and run inference. So uh, run inference. So we have heard a lot about run inference today. I'm just going to touch a little about it and we're going to move on from it. So yeah, run inference is a simple to use P transform that can be used with the task of inference with the help of a model handler. Model handler is a class where you can configure your parameters that can be used for model loading, model inference, etc. And right now, there are six frameworks that are supported PyTorch, TensorFlow, Scilearn, XGBoost, Onyx, and TensorRT. And there, there are many more to come in the future. So why run inference? So run inference helps with like model loading, batching, you don't need to do batching on your end, run inference takes care of it, error handling. So if you have an input that is bad, we will, we will use dead letter, dead letter queue to filter out the bad inputs from the good ones and the pipeline won't stop since you encountered a bad input. And also we'll calculate metrics like latency, like mode, uh, model loading latency and also the inference latency, the time it took for for, th for the model to do the inference on the batch. And also run inference takes care of uh, sharing the model across the threads in a single process. So it will be useful to for the threads to load the model only once per process and you won't explode the memory. So this is all achieved by run inference and it will help eliminate most of the boilerplate code. So as you can see, you just, uh, from the code, you just read some images and you pre-process the images and then you just pass the images to the run inference transform with a uh, respective model handler of your choice, like uh, framework choice, like TensorFlow or PyTorch, and it will take care of inferences. So now I would like to talk about how to update the ML model that is running in a beam pipeline that uses run inference. So specifically, I want to talk about streaming pipelines since streaming pipelines can be running for so many days and we don't want to stop the streaming pipeline just to update the ML model. So how could we achieve this? So the current process to update the models is run inference takes a model path or model URI uh, within, with the use of model handler. So the updating the model requires the stopping the pipeline, changing the uh, model path or model URI and restarting the pipeline again. So the issues with this process is that it can lead to the service downtime. The model update process is manual. So it can lead to potential human error. So to avoid this, we will introduce automatic model refresh. So what is automatic model refresh? Uh, it enables updating the models in the run inference without you stopping the pipeline. So this is automated, so you don't need to stop or check whether the model is updated or not. If you follow the certain semantics, it, it will get upda updated in the run inference. So how does automatic model refresh works? Automatic model refresh, refresh takes Beans side inputs to fetch the latest model path. Uh, you so for example let's say you have a model handler you provide a default model path to it the streaming pipeline will run with the model path and let's say you have a model b which has which provides like better metrics compared to the model a and now you want to swap the model a with model b so that is the use case i'm targeting in a streaming pipeline this is achieved by the automatic model refresh using the side inputs. So what are side inputs in Apache Beam? So side inputs, uh, 
or nothing but a p collection view which is which are accessible from a dufan so in the process method of the dufan you 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 can access the side input during the runtime so the side inputs elements are not determined during the pipeline construction time but during the runtime so if you have some elements that are changed during the runtime you can pass them as a side inputs to the uh do funds and you can access that element in the process method of the do fun also side inputs can be used as a caching layer it means like you can store a small metadata which can fit into the memory for example a model path or model id etc we will talk about it in the coming slides i also attached a link to the side inputs if some if anyone is interested in reading about side inputs so uh, side inputs in run inference how does side inputs fit in run inference so as you can see here this is the uh, high level view of run inference so first we'll have examples coming to, into the run inference p transform where we batch elements and after batching elements what we do is we call a run inference do fun in which the we use the model handler in which we call the load model logic and this load model we will use the shared here shared utility which is used to share the model across the threads in a single process so that a model is loaded only once per process and the threads can safely read the model in this shared utility so and the load model the mo model will get called and it is passed to the run inference so with this automatic model refresh we introduced this side input which will emit a model path which could be your latest model which provides better and accurate results than the previous one to the run inference do fun and if there is a new model path like uh when compared to the previous model path and uh, if it is different we'll update the model in this load model method and also update the model in the shared utility and there will be no pipeline interruption for this and the pipeline will run so yeah this is the high level overview of how we introduce side inputs in the run inference transform so yeah model metadata so this is the output of the side input the run inference expects so the side input to the run inference should be a model path but it should be wrapped in a model metadata to provide uniformity across all the model handlers so the model metadata has two attributes here one is model id and a model na model name model id is nothing but a model uri or a model path to which where you can load the model using a model handler the model name is is a unique name like an identifier for the model like human readable identifier and also this model name will be used as a prefix and will be attached to the matrix namespace to differentiate between the matrix like matrix calculated by the different models so run inference expects the side input to have the output in this format uh so yeah this is this is just a name tuple model metadata so now moving forward with the automatic model refresh there are two patterns one is watch mode one is event mode watch mode is nothing but you have a directory and you upload your latest model through your ci cd pipeline and you have a new model and you upload it to a directory and in apache beam we use a watch file pattern we have a watch file pattern p transform what it does is it takes a file pattern which is a glob pattern and it periodically checks if there is a newly matching file pattern if there is a newly matching file pattern it will hot swap the current run inference model with the newly matching file pattern model and the inferences will continue from there the next one is event mode which is for example you will use a pub sub source that emits the updates for example the pub sub source that emits a model path whenever there is an event update 
on the user end and this will be used to hot swap the model in the run inference again so watch file pattern this is one of the pattern of the watch mode here as i said this takes a file pattern which watches a directory for any updates it takes interval in which like periodically checks for the file pattern so you can specify like okay uh, i want to check like every 10 minutes you can pass 60 times 10 to it it is in seconds also it follows the slowly updating side input pattern which means we expect the side input to updates to be very uh, we expect the side input updates to be infrequent for example once per day twice per day so it follows this pattern and the next thing is every file name that you upload to a directory should be unique since the watch file pattern under the hood it uses state cache to look for a new matching file and if the name is the same it won't update so every time if if a file gets uploaded to a directory it should have a unique name compared to the other files in the directory so yeah uh, so this can be achieved with very simple code here sorry uh, don't mind the indentation here so yeah you can you define a watch file pattern p collection with uh, watch file pattern p transform and you pass a file pattern which is nothing but a glob pattern and you pass this watch file pattern variable to the model metadata p col collection attribute uh, parameter of run inference and run inference will take care of swapping the models whenever there is an update uh, this mod uh, this is non-deterministic so the update can happen like one minute or two minutes or five minutes but it shouldn't be too long so the time it takes to update the model is non-deterministic so the next one is read from pop sub a, a pattern of event mode so instead of using watch file pattern like watching a directory you use an event like for example reading from pop sub to read your model path and convert that model path to a model metadata and you pass this event model side input to the model metadata pickle attribute and run inference will take care of hot swapping the model for you so output of run inference uh, the output of run inference will be a prediction result an end tuple in which you'll have an example inference and a model id example is nothing but the input on which the inference is computed on inference is the result from the model and the model id this is the id which is used to uh, which is used to load the model and perform the inference so in the apache beam pipeline in the downstream components of run inference if you want to filter out the models you can use it with the attribute model id here this will be different for different models of course so yeah in summary uh, use automatic model refresh if you want to update uh, ml models in run inference in streaming pipelines without the need of manual intervention or stopping the pipeline uh, there are watch mode and event mode watch mode means watching a directory for any model updates event mode means using an event such as reading from pub sub uh, beam provides a pattern called watch file pattern you can use that watch file pattern to watch any directory gcs aws any bucket that is accessible by the pipeline to get the latest model that matches the file pattern uh, i want to show one pipeline that i ran with this uh, hot swapping so for the metrics like i suggested like i showed you before here the model id model name the model name a prefix to the matrix namespace so it is attached to the matrix namespace so that's what i'm going to show you first so the default model won't have any prefix so everything will be like this and after i ran the pipeline after i ran some inferences around like so this pipeline what it does is it reads image names from the pub sub and does some pre-processing and 
does run inference on the pre-processed image and here I passed a side input to the run inference which is a watch file pattern so it uses Apache beams match continuously under the hood to watch for a directory and provide updates and I have after running the pipeline for some time, uh, around like for, let's say, so for 1161 inferences, I updated, I uploaded a model to the GCS bucket and I named it ResNet152 underscore test underscore one. And after some time, it started to pick up that model and all the inferences from that point will start to use the ResNet 152 test underscore one. So, yep. So that is all, uh, any questions?